My god, where to start? Well, back in January of 1987, Data East created this arcade abomination, and by the end of the year, it was given a port for the Famicom and the NES. Who's Data East? Well, just a little company that went bankrupt in 2003, probably because they invested any amount of money into games like Karnov. Seriously though, Data East is responsible for Joe and Mac, Kung Fu Master, and Burger Time. It's also responsible for bringing the Midway classic Rampage to the NES. It's also responsible for the nightmare-inducing Donaldland, a Famicom game based on McDonald's' mascot. What is he, throwing bombs? What is this? This is supposed to be a kid's game and... Is that a skeleton snake? Is there blood on his face? I digress. Karnov, have you heard of it? The action platformer that's up there with Super Mario, Mega Man, and Castlevania. Wait, no? Well, that's not right. Those games all had sequels. All Karnov got were a few cameos, all of which made him the villain. Maybe because the game was bad. Our story begins with the lost treasure of Babylon being stolen from the village of Crimina by an evil dragon named Ryu. Oh, you know, just the treasures of an ancient Mesopotamian holy city stolen by a street-fighting dragon. It says here that Ryu means dragon, so he's a dragon named Dragon. Which, I guess, makes sense. I mean, dragons are reptilian, so the mother's probably not there for him. And then the first day of preschool rolls up, and all the kids are screaming, DRAGON! DRAGON! Ah! He's probably going to assume his name's Dragon. So who do you call when your holy grail is stolen by an evil dragon named Dragon? Indiana Jones in the form of an ex-circus strongman who breathes fire. His name? Jinbarov Karnovsky! Also known as Karnov. Now we're gonna forgive this gong show of a story because we gotta remember that Nintendo's big seller here is an Italian plumber named Mario Mario living in a world of fungi people and his main adversary is a giant turtle who breathes fire and has magical powers. Karnov enters every level riding in on a goddamn lightning bolt. Like you do. First thing you notice is the seemingly out of place yet kind of catchy music. And get used to it. Cause it's the only song in the game. Gameplay is clunky. If Karnov falls off a ledge, he'll slowly fall until he touches ground, being unable to move left or right. Now Karnov can shoot fireballs, and if he collects this power up here, he gains the ability to shoot an additional ball, up to a total of three. However, if Karnov takes any damage, he turns blue, cause he's sad. If Karnov is hit again while he's blue, Karnov will die. If he collects one of these power-ups while he's blue, rather than gaining additional firepower, he just returns to his orange color. K's are the coins of Karnov. Collect 50 of them, you get an extra life. Collectible items include boots for jumping higher, bombs for blowing up enemies and very rare blocks, ladders for out-of-reach items. However, be careful with this as it can summon a dragon every once in a while. As well, there are boomerangs, spiked bombs called clappers that defeat all enemies on the screen, and a shield. There are also glasses, swimming masks, and wings. But these items are only usable when you hear this god-awful noise. Now, the enemies in this game feel like someone went into their six-year-old's coloring book and picked all of the drawings that kind of look cool. We got Rockman, not to be confused with Rockman, Lion Keeper, Chicken Bone, these are their real names by the way, Snake Woman, Starman from Earthbound, Groot, 
Fish with Hand and Bag Man, Storm Cloud Yoda, and many, many more. With the exception of a few bosses, most of the fights are just hammer on the B button with a shield on. There isn't a lot of method behind it. Have full power, a shield, and maybe a ladder, and you're gold. The first boss, the majestic Fish with Hand and Bag Man, is a pretty interesting fight for a first level boss. You have to figure out his little pattern. It's actually quite simple, so simple he becomes a regular enemy later. Now our friend Dragon, the last boss, Dragon the Dragon, is actually a pretty challenging last boss. You have to be on your A-game with these clunky controls. So as far as level design goes, it's pretty interesting, as there's definitely some thought put into it. The arcade version had a lot of environment interactions, but all of that was lost with the port. Only a few spots remain, specific walls that can be destroyed with bombs. However, for the levels that have a lot of vertical areas, the game suffers from choppy screen pans. This game also has a problem that so many NES games have, and that's with enemies respawning with the slightest screen adjustment. Additionally, the enemy placements aren't bad, but they do have a habit of appearing out of fucking nowhere. The game suffers from a large amount of artificial difficulty. Its flawed design and simple matters makes the game a frustrating mess, and that isn't even bringing into account how you select your collected items. You use the D-pad to scroll through your inventory. Makes sense. I believe the intended way to do this was when you pause the game. However, when you play, every time you hit left or right, you scroll through active items. Who thought this was a good idea? It's so frustrating to get the item you want when you need it, especially when you're in the heat of battle. This game is just a mess. Bonkers story, terrible controls, a slew of unrelated enemies, and repetitive music. It's the definition of a bad game. And I love it. What? There is a beauty in this. It tries so hard, yet it fails in every way. But it's still playable. And beatable. And if you find a flow, you can really get into a groove. And who can take that away from me? No one. That's what really matters. This game makes me happy. And no argument about how bad the game is can change my mind. Because I agree. This game is crap. Yeah, I got a huge heart on for this game. It just makes me happy every time I play it. Maybe it's nostalgia, maybe it's the absolute ridiculousness of the game, but I enjoy playing it. As a kid, I would rent this game over and over again. I mean, look at the cover! What six-year-old wouldn't rent this game? So no matter how badly somebody tears down something you love, be it a movie, a book, a game? A band? If you enjoy it, nobody can take that away from you. Now, if you'll excuse me. There's also spiked bombs called clappers that defeat every enemy on the stream. On the stream. Every enemy on your stream. If you're Twitch streaming this game, you use a clapper, kill all your enemies. Any of the, any of the haters.